Welcome back to another How to Scout series with your boy Draft Wall. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to scout corners. So, you know what? Let's just get into it. So, the way that I scout corners or the way that I think that people scout corners or they should scout corners is based off of different traits um, that I always talk about in my How to Scout series. And these different traits um, really rely on mostly how the NFL is changing today and what teams are looking for in a corner I mean it's it's pretty easily it's pretty self pretty self-explanatory of what you would want in a top corner and who you consider a top corner and uh, what the type of things that they would that they actually would do to make them a top corner um, but it's one of the craziest things because scouting corners is really hard um, maybe it's just hard for me I feel as though it's easy because you can see the different things like when a guy's in man coverage or zone coverage or if they're pressing up against the line, you see the instincts of tackling ability. But the problem a lot of times is, is that sometimes these guys in college, they're not going against, you know, obviously the highest competition all the time. Just because you play in the SEC, you're playing for LSU, Georgia, Alabama, or Florida or something like that, that doesn't mean that you're going or you're always going to going up against the best competition. Um and and it's and really you know even even with the other conferences like even a Big Ten or ACC, you know it's it's the same thing. You're not always going against the biggest competition because a lot of times, um, especially in recent years, some of the top corners and even your first round corners have not been the best corners in the draft. When it's all said and done, after they get to the NFL, so it's one of those things where it's a little bit hard to kind of to kind of gauge of who's the top corner. But these are certain things that I do now. In this video earlier, and I'm, I'm going to just say this, I have not been the best at scouting corners. Um, I have to, you know, that's probably my weakest position in terms of scouting. Uh, anybody that's been out there, you know, from guys from, you know, the past years and till now, I've, I've, been, I've, been, I've been wrong a couple of times, but there's been times I've been right. So, you know what, let's just get into it. So, when you're looking at scouting corners in the 2020 NFL draft, one of the things, the biggest thing that you're going to always look at is the man-to-man -man cover skills. Um, when it comes to the man-to-man -man cover skills, you're looking at feet, you're looking at hips, you're looking at how, how they open it, open up their hips, Are they, or is it quick, is it smooth, you're looking at their feet, you're looking at how quickly their feet are, and in, with their feet, you're looking at also instincts and reaction time. That's one. Of, those are the like kind of the biggest things to look at. Um, whether they're in zone or man, quick feet and hips, really kind of distinguish you know how good a corner can be because uh it, it gives you a perspective of uh of how uh it gives you a perspective of how quick a guy can be when it comes to those when it comes to playing in those man or zone uh type of schemes so um one of the biggest things is quick feet helps in zone coverage uh Good smooth hips helps in man coverage. Um, a lot of times, you know, in zone coverage, you're looking back at the quarterback. So there's times where, where uh, you you your, your quickness and your feet and your reaction time uh, gives you a better chance of. Um, of making a play on the ball and being able to stop what the offense is trying to do. And then especially in man coverage, because you do have to turn your back to the quarterback because you're following the receiver and you're keeping your eye one-on-one -on -one receiver, uh, smooth hips uh, helps a lot. Um, if you can open up your hips pretty well, it gives you a, uh, a better chance of being able to stick with the guy one-on-one. -on -one. Um, speed is also going to be one of the biggest characters, obviously, um, especially guys that play in the man-to-man -man schemes. Um, but even in zone schemes, and even if you're not playing in man-to-man -man zone, and it's a kind of a balanced type of defense where you're going to do both a lot of times, and it's not just strictly off a of man and off the zone, that's a big thing to kind of have. So most most of the complete corners that can do both have the quick feet and the, and, and the smooth hips. And then when you go into deeper you know you're looking at guys that are uh, that are usually physical whether they're pressing guys at the line or they're uh, or they're making a the tackle I mean those are the biggest things when you can find a guy that can do those two big things it really really helps out uh, for especially for your team because you're able to disrupt uh, you're able to destruct an offense and take off the timing so that's a big thing that you need that's a big thing that cornerbacks need to, to really uh, succeed in the, within the NFL. Um, tackling is always not the biggest thing. Um, the reason why tackling is not always the biggest thing is because most of the time guys and the split, well, scouts today are coveting the cover guys more than they're coveting guys that can be physical. Um, versatility, though, is something that they all they do try to look for. So the thing is, is that you know 
being in college, if you can tackle and you show good in zone zone skills and you show instincts and stuff like that, um, usually those type of guys end up having good good later uh, careers at other at the different position of like uh, being a nickel corner or being a safety. We've seen guys like Rod Woodson and Charles Woodson make that switch from corner to safety and make it seamlessly because they were actually really, really good. They had, they were big, tall guys, so they had the size. That's a huge thing. Um, it's not always the most important thing, but they had the size because sometimes, you know, that extra inch does help out. Um, so they had the size. Then on top of that, these guys had quick feet and they can open up their hips very, very smoothly. And with that, they were also guys that were pretty physical at the same time. They weren't guys that, you know, shot away from contact like a Deion Sanders. You know, I think that Deion Sanders could have had a, a long, a even longer career if he was a guy that would take more risks with being a little bit more physical. But he was so gifted in his speed and his quickness and agility that he didn't need to do that. But guys like Rod Woodson and Charles Woodson, they actually needed to kind of do that because then these guys end up having, you know, almost 20 years career like I think at least about 15 year careers and you know they they did well for themselves and now you know they're regarded as some of the best defensive backs in their future you know uh, Rod, Charles Woodson is definitely a future hall of famer Rods what Wood, Woodson is all, all already a future hall of famer but you know this is the things that scouts are really really looking at is they're looking at those these these certain little these certain little things that you need to have um and I mean, it's not always going to be so sm a smooth transition. It's not going to always be so easy to sit there and watch a corner, you know, watch watch a corner on tape and just say, oh yeah, this is the guy. Like I said, there's been plenty of guys like Trey Waynes and Vernon Hargraves and um, just just I mean, at least just to name two guys or Darquez Denard and you know guys that I saw and I said, oh, you know, I like this player. And then they got to the NFL and it wasn't as good as what I thought it was be. Then, you know, I've had, I've been right on some guys, you know, like Justin Gilbert. I was never a fan of him. And, um, the, you know, there's been other guys here and there, but, you know, you always have these different types of corners that come out. You know, ball skills is a huge thing. Also, that's another trait that you have to look at. And, um, one of the things that I didn't like about, I would name a draft, uh, uh, 2017, you had Marshawn Lattimore, you had uh, Marlon Humphrey, I think Gary on Connolly was in that draft, um, <clears throat> and uh, I'll just name Tredavious White because he was the other like real known corner. There was there's a lot of corners in that draft, um, in particularly, but um, I remember I didn't like Marlon Humphrey. Uh, oh, Odori Jackson was in that draft too. I didn't like Marlon Humphrey because uh, he didn't he had good man to man skills. Um, in terms of he stuck with receivers, uh, it's zone, you know, he wasn't really a zone type of guy. He was just more of a man to man guy. But, uh, one of the biggest things was that when it came to playing the ball in the air, he didn't, he didn't do that well. And that was the reason why I didn't like him, but he was a good tackler and he stuck with his receivers. Well, it's kind of showed up in the NFL, but I think that he's become a better corner now in the NFL than he was in college. So that's a, that's a thing where it's a situation where you have a guy that, you know, is, is, the transition was easy for him, but he got better at it. Because sometimes these guys, you could be the exact way, same way as Marlon Humphrey and not transition that well. And Humphrey was able to transition better than a lot of these other guys. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore, who, you know, in that draft and everybody thought, even I thought, was probably one of the better corners in that draft, period. Um, I really, I did, I did like Marshawn. My only biggest problem was the injuries that he had. But he was the best cover guy. He was the best all-around corner, period. And then um, just looking at, like, a Dory Jackson or Tredavious White, Gary on Connolly, um, Connolly, um, I wasn't as big of a fan. I can't remember exactly what was the things I didn't like about him, but I, I'm not a huge fan on Ohio State corners, period. Um, and I kind of got into that, which I'm going to put a description um, descript in the description, gotcha. I'm going to put a link below of when I was talking about the top corners within the 2020 draft, so you'll see that. But, um, there was, uh, this was, I forgot the exact reason why I didn't. I have to look back at my notes to just to remember. But then um, just looking at guys like Tredavious Wright and Adoree Jackson, both of these guys shouldn't work in the NFL. Um, I like Adoree a little bit more because he was a quick corner. Um, he can go man-to-man, -man, stuff like that, but he was small. And it's kind of showed up in the NFL with the inconsistencies that Adoree Jackson brings. And then last but not least, Tredavious Wright, um, everybody was looking at him as that he didn't honestly had the amazing speed. Um, hips, his hips weren't as smooth uh he had pretty good feet 
Um, but now he's gotten to the NFL and he's training. He worked on his technique, and now he's one of the best corners in the league. And he's a guy that you know he stayed in in the, in the college till he was a senior and and really exploded out there uh, within the NFL. And he he stuck with his technique, stuck with his teachings, and he's a good learner. And that's the thing that you can't teach. It's teaching guys to retain information to make them a better player. And that's what Tre'Davious White did. And right now, Tre'Davious is probably the second best corner in the draft, even though you have Marlon Humphrey up there and the door Jackson and so on and so forth. And there's a there's a couple other guys there as well. But you know, overall, you know, this this draft in particularly, just to get just to get straight into the 2020 draft, um the draft in particular, I really actually do like it. There's a lot of good players that are in this. The only thing that I'm not a huge fan of is that there's not a lot of uh, natural ball hawks or ball skill guys. You're, there's not that one guy that had those seasons where he was having big interceptions except for a small school guy named Amik Robertson. So there's, it's, it's, it's going to be a little bit difficult this year to distinguish, well, who was the best corners in this draft? Um, but I would just say this, because of the, the ball hawk skills with a lot of these guys but i'll just say this just look at you know all the things that i talk about the tackling ability the hips the ball hawking ability a little bit but the just the tackling the hips the feet how you know that explain how they go in man and zone the instincts these are the these are the main traits to really really look at just look at those type of things that you're going to find yourself looking at and and really recognizing who are probably the best corners in this league so anyway that was the How to Scout series for the cornerbacks. Once again, this is your boy Draft Raw. Please subscribe. Please comment. Please share. Hit that like button. Whatever. Goodbye.